Okay, in this lesson, we're going to continue to look at quadratic functions in standard form. This is the last part of this particular section. And as you can see in the title here, what we're going to be doing is problem solving with a graphing calculator. So if you're in my class and you have your study guide out, you may want to pause this regularly and practice along with me. Uh, have a graphing calculator out as well. If you're not in my class, I will also show you so the context of these problems, how to solve them, and also another piece of technology in order that you could use in order to solve these types of problems, amongst others. <clears throat> so, problem one says the following. A skier's jump was recorded in frame-by-frame -frame analysis and placed in one picture as shown. So they took a whole bunch of uh, snapshots of a skier and they analyzed it. The skier's coach used the picture to determine the quadratic function that relates to the skier's height above the ground, measured in y, measured in meters, to the time, x and seconds, that a skier was in the air. So here's the quadratic function that represents this path right here of the particular skier. <clears throat> And uh, you can see that it kind of models a quadratic function or parabola as it's symmetrical. First thing it says is graph the function. And then it says determine the skier's maximum height to the nearest tenth of a meter <coughs> and state the range of the function for this context. So the first thing we're going to do is graph this function, which I've highlighted in green at this particular moment. So if I have my graphing calculator out, I would turn it on. And then I would, since I want to put the function in, and if you forget how to do all these things, you may want to go to the previous lesson, which showed you how to calculate the vertex, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercept on your graphing calculator. <clears throat> but here we go. Press y equals. If there's a function in there that's incorrect, you may want to press clear, which is on your calculator to the right. And now enter in the function that is in green on your screen. Now the negative button has to be pressed, not the minus button. If you're starting an expression, the negative button on these calculators is kind of different. Uh, so the negative button is on the bottom row right here, so negative 4.9, and here is x squared. And again, if you want to pause this video at any point in time, because I'm going to quickly, you're more than welcome to do that. So I have the function, and I'm going to press graph. <clears throat> if it looks funny, and your window is kind of messed up, you may want to press zoom, and then 6. Or if you're in my class and aren't seeing the exact same thing as I'm seeing right here, press zoom, which is on your top row, and then the number 6. <clears throat> At this particular point, given the context and the fact that we want to see the maximum height, we're not seeing everything that's important. We want to see the top of the skier's ski jump. Uh, in order to change this window, or what you're seeing, because right now we're seeing from negative 10 to positive 10 on each axis, you can press window. And since we want to see higher up, that would be right here the y maximum. Since we want to see further up on that axis, I'm going to change that value to 15 and see if I can see the top of the jump. So once you've changed your window or altered any of those values, press graph again. And as you can see, I can see the top of the skier's jump. <clears throat> now the two things we want to find are the maximum height and the range of this particular jump. So in this particular time, the maximum height is going to be, and that's the vertex, so we press second and then trace. The maximum height is a maximum, so that vertex is a maximum. So I'm going to press 4, and it's going to ask me three questions. A left boundary, so go anywhere to the left of the vertex. This is to the left of the vertex. Hit enter. You may want to look at the previous video if you're not understanding a left boundary, right boundary, and guess. Next, ask me for a right boundary, so I'm going to press the right arrow until I get to the right of the vertex, hit enter, and then make a guess as to where the vertex is and hit enter. And my calculator is telling me that the maximum height is the y value, so it's roughly 12.5 meters because it says to the nearest tenth of a meter. Uh, <clears throat> and as you can see here on my screen, if you have your study guide out, you will be expected to show me what you're seeing on your graphing calculator and give me the window. So this window here is stated above, below, to the right, and to the left of uh, the screen at this moment. So the maximum height, as was calculated, is 12.5 meters, as you can see. And the range, uh, considering the context of the particular problem, you cannot go underground because it's a word problem, so the bottom of your range would be zero, because a negative y value would mean that you are underground or you have a negative height. Uh, so the range here is between the ground, which is zero, and 12.5. This is one way to write it, or you could write it uh, in set notation, which looks like this.
So either way, that is your range. Uh, we're going to be looking at one more problem. <clears throat> uh, this problem states the following. Suppose you throw a stone from a cliff that is 110 meters above a beach. The height of the stone in meters, h in meters, is given as a function of time, t in seconds. h is negative 4.9 t squared plus 17 t plus 110. Determine the maximum height reached by the stone, the length of time the stone is in the air, and the domain and range of the function. Round your answers to two decimal places. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is graph this highlighted in green function on my calculator. Now, since our calculators, Oops. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, don't deal with the variables h and t very well. Uh, what we're going to do is just use the variables y and x. So if I just press y equals and clear the function, I'm going to enter in the function in green, uh, negative 4.9, and instead of t, I'm just, just going to represent it with x squared plus 17x plus 110 and hit graph. At this point in time, <clears throat> since the stone was thrown from a cliff that was 110 meters above the beach, it may be expected that I can't see the top of this function. I can just see the beginning and end of the function, but not the top or the vertex of the function. Now I'm going to want, since I know that the y-intercept is 110, I'm going to want a window, so I can press window. I want to see much, much, much higher. <clears throat> I'm going to change my y-maximum to 150 and see if that works. And again, if you're in my class, you may want to pause this and try it yourself. And as you can see here, <clears throat> I have access to the entire function. And I've graphed it in my study guide off to the left here in blue and black. <clears throat> and what we want to do now is answer all of the following questions. It says, what's the maximum height? I'm going to do that rather quickly. The maximum height is the vertex. So I'm going to press second and then trace and then maximum, which is four. Uh, get a left boundary. Let's go anywhere to the left, which I've already done. I pressed enter right away. Now it's asking me for a right boundary. I'm pressing enter, and then going to a guess and pressing enter. And the maximum height is the y value, 124.74 <clears throat> meters. Uh, next, it says determine the time it was in the air. Uh, the time in the air. <clears throat> would be until it, until it hits the ground. And this particular stone is hitting the ground right here at this point where my arrow is pointing at this x-intercept, not this one. This part of the graph actually does not exist because it's, it's in negative time. So the only part of the graph that exists is the positive quadrant. So this point here would be <clears throat> a zero. So press second, trace, and then zero. It's going to ask me for a left boundary. So I'm going to go anywhere to the left of that x-intercept, not the left of the vertex, but the left of the x-intercept. Since the, the x-intercept is here, this would be to the left, hit enter, then go to the right. My trace bug will disappear. So my trace bug is somewhere down here where my arrow is, but it's definitely to the right of the x-intercept. Hit enter, and then press left until I get close to the x-intercept. So you'll just barely see my trace bug. So there it is. I'm going to hit enter. So it was in the air for... 6.78 seconds. <clears throat> and finally, the domain. Uh, well, this particular rock was thrown at a time of zero and hits the ground at 6.78. So the domain here would be between a time of zero and 6.78 seconds. That's when it started and ended its uh, path. Or if you want a set notation, it would be between zero and 6.78 represented this way. And the range is between 0, which is the ground, and the maximum height, which is 124.74, or in set notation, between 0 and 124.74. Okay? And that is the end of this particular lesson.